Thank you for joining us for The Link tonight. And uh, on May 20th, uh, 2020, the Parliament of the Republic of Uganda passed the National Local Content Bill 2019. And the National Law Content Act, or Act into Law, and it now awaits the President's assent uh, or to assent to that uh, to assent to the law. Now, the Act seeks to address and, re and remedy the shortcomings and defects within all existing policy legislation and guidelines touching on the subject of local content in Uganda and includes the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act 2003 or PPDA, the Petroleum Exploration Development and Production Act 2013, the Petroleum Exploration Development and Production, the National, uh, National Content Regulations 2016, a lot of things, including guideline on reservation schemes to promote local content 2018, and the Buy Uganda, Build Uganda, or commonly known as the Bubu policy. Now, each of these laws, regulations, and guidelines, and policies present shortcomings uh, to holistically address the overall question of the national local content or participation of local companies, hence the need for legislation to align them. So the overall objective of the national uh, of that law is therefore to impose local content obligations uh, on all persons using public resources or, or carrying on an active activity under a license in Uganda. But with me in the studio tonight is uh, John Walgembe, the executive director of the um, Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises, enterprises which will be targeting some of the businesses, uh, critical businesses. And this law, John, comes at a time when government is, uh, or is looking at um, undertaking huge, huge businesses on really? some of these huge projects. And we've had a lot of gospel, some from you, uh, mm. bankers and government itself, and how mm. Ugandans are really going to uh, take mm. a, a good fair share of, of some of these businesses. However, yes. uh, it, it, it's, uh, we are so unlucky that we're still waiting for some of these businesses to come through. Yes. But someone told me, um, mm. an expert told me that it's good to wait, it's good to prepare. So that mm. by the time we start, we are really very good. So let's, um, as, as the president uh, now, uh, as we wait for the president to send to the law, mm. um, people would s really s seek to know from where you sit as, mm. as businesses, the, mm. the spirit of the law. Do you, wh wh what is in your, what is in the corridors <laughs> of your offices okay. right now? Uh, f firstly, mm. Mm. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, firstly, I need to say that this is a good law in the sense that, as you've said, it seeks to consolidate all the other regulations around local content. Mm -hmm. None of them had the force of law. If you look at the Bobo policy, if you look at the PPD Act and so on, none of them consolidated all these issues into one law. And this law seeks to ensure that a certain percentage of goods, of services, of and a certain percentage of uh, our local personnel are employed as contractors or local content entities, as they are called, uh, provide uh, goods and services on the local uh, on the local market. Mm -hmm. So we believe overall this local content act is good. But before we proceed, I need to also mention that the president has rejected some of the provisions yeah, sure. in the act already, uh, because um, according to him, the laws, for instance, certain donors have their own requirements with regard to procurement. Second, he has also highlighted the fact that this law is against uh, the spirit of the East African common market, and then which allows the free flow of goods and services across the, mm -hmm. the ESC. And this law, he has also said, uh, is, d is not aligned to the PPDA Act of 2013 mm -hmm. that, r that provides for international competitive bidding. So I would say some of those reservations that the president raises are important. But allow me to say that the law as it is, is fully supported by us. Uh, firstly, it says that a certain, uh, any foreign entity that wants to provide uh, a, a product or service here needs to subcontract at least 40% of the value of that contract to locals. Locals, yes. Mm. It further says that that local entity needs to show that at least 20% of the raw materials or products used in the delivery of that service are sourced locally. Mm. It it mandates these entities to spend at least two percent of the, their contract value on training of local personnel. It also insists that at least sixty percent of staff should be local, and that in case uh, a company is applying for a work permit, 
they should first prove to the Department of Local Content, which will be based the Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. that there is no Ugandan who is qualified to take that job. Now, this is standard practice across the world, actually. As you go to countries, you cannot take up a job that a local can do effectively. So we believe that this law is simply bringing Uganda at par with what other countries are doing. Remember, 60% of our spend goes towards procurement. If you look at the budget, 60% of that goes towards procurement. So if you don't have laws and regulations that ensure that this money remains in the local economy, mm -hmm. then we are not doing anything with regard to import substitution, and then we're also shooting ourselves in the foot with regard to job creation. So I believe the spirit of the law is good. Obviously, when, you, when these things come up, it will disadvantage some people. There are people who are used... And it, this comes at a very critical time when the final investment decision in the oil and gas sector has mm. been made. Mm. Mm. So it means that this law should act to ensure that the bulk of that investment stays here locally. But as I said, some people wouldn't want that. It's not in favor of mm. certain interests for yeah. such laws to be passed because then uh, they would ensure that they don't gain as much as they have been gaining. John, I'm one of those people who believe that, w you know, improvement, we should, that the two sides should Im impr improve. Uh, yes. What we need to improve on the businesses and, yes. and then the government itself uh, or the policy makers. Yeah. Uh, for instance, if, if you now look at uh, what um, contractors are saying, for instance, they're saying yes. they're getting business, they're mm. beginning to get a fair share of business. Correct. But that, that share of business, when you look at the value of that share of business, yes. does not commensurate well with what foreign companies get. Correct. Now, this lo the, the, the gospel about local content is not new. Yes. Um, it's been around since we started talking oil ETC. Yes. So if we have not yet started making sure that the local companies get a fair value, Fair, sh a fair share, but there's a fair share, but that the value of what they get yes. is not yet, um, yes. you know, uh, yes. really reasonable. Yes. Uh, so there is a gap there. So f the, my question now is how can SMEs position themselves or are they ready or how can they take uh, advantage of the, this new framework, legal framework? Okay, so w uh, SMEs can prepare themselves up to a certain point. Mm. A government must put in place the relevant mm -hmm. legal framework. And that's why this law is important. Mm -hmm. Without a law, anyone will do anything. I'll start a business here and import the sweepers mm -hmm. and import people who are locking the door and Im import receptionists. This is completely unacceptable in a country where uh, uh, the bulk of our population are young people who are looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. So I think the starting point is to have a robust law that can be enforced. Second, we have to look at issues of capacity. And capacity is not the responsibility solely of SMEs. Capacity is an issue that is cross-cutting. And that's why this law provides for a 2% investment in training. If you don't train local people, if you don't train SMEs, then how will they build the capacity to take advantage of those opportunities? Mm -hmm. So I think the starting point is the law to ensure that local people and local companies and uh, our young people are not disenfranchised as money is being spent. Mm. Yes. But John, and, and, and if you look, because when we speak local companies, Correct. Um, uh, how confident are you, or if, if you look around, yes. uh, what companies are prepared and how local are they? Because when you look around, <laughs> You look around companies and you look into their books and, and the, the, the formation and it's you, you find that most of the companies that we call local are actually not very, very local in terms of ownership ETC. So mm. there, there, there is still a gap missing out there. And then before, you know, people are saying, ah, for us, uh, are being left out. So, so even companies themselves within, within the, 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 the local economy, the governance, the ownership, it's the, like the, there's still something which is not right. Just, we're not seeing. It's not visible. No, okay, mm. so I, I think we don't want to promote the notion that mm. only Ugandan-owned companies of course, should yes. be the ones that... But that they promote. should benefit as, as it should be. Yeah, so mm. if you have a foreign company come up and set up a subsidiary here... I think the requirement... Uh, the requirements in the law that they should also I I include so in the... So if you've already put a requirement with regard to employees, mm. it's a foreign company but has come and employed 60% of your personnel. Yes. And 
for the, the other expatriates, they have a succession plan. Are we seeing that happen? I, not yet. And that's why this law is critical. Because that's what exactly I mean. Because that, in, first of all, you must have the intention. If the intention is not there, then what do you implement? Mm. So the law is the starting point to say this is our aspiration as a country. They are establishing a department for local content in the Ministry of Finance that will see to it that this law is mm. implemented. Okay? The, the concerns of His Excellency are very valid points. But we should not throw out the baby with the bathwater. We cannot throw out the entire law because a okay. few issues are And then of open. course issues like so I think what will Ugandan companies do, will they sweep? <laughs> because we still see Ugandan companies uh, sweeping roads, we see Uganda companies uh, uh, taking funny jobs like slashing and all that. And I hope that law really encompasses all those That's issues. That's why we have in the law, there is the issue of succession plan. Mm. So let's say uh, Mr. X has skills that cannot be found with any Ugandan. Mm. We hire him. He is supposed to have an understanding. So that person picks on the skills. After five years, his work permit won't be renewed. This person mm. will be required to step into their shoes. Okay. So I think the law on the whole, if you look at the law, it's good. And the spirit is a good one. My worry is around the implementation. The implement, you know, as a country, we have very nice laws and then you don't implement them. Okay. So that's my worry. I hope that the Department for Local Content in the Ministry of Finance that is proposing the law will have some teeth to bite and will be ensure that these things are actually enforced. You know, if you look at the bubble policy, very nice things, 20% shelf space, 30% reserved. Who has implemented anything? Nothing. So this law, if just it's not implemented... Just like a lot of policies that So we have if here this law is not <laughs> implemented, then it will just be wasting everyone's time. Okay. And I hope that that won't be the case. We hope that history won't repeat itself. Well, we, 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 have, we, have, we have good stuff on paper. We hope that history won't repeat itself, <laughs> and we, ask, and we want mm. to request the president to ascend to this bill with a few changes. We, we hope working, this law will working not with parliament. We hope this law will not suffer the same, same, same disease that the other laws have suffered. No, we have to be hopeful. We, we have very good laws on paper, and you have been told that very good policies. Yes. And I was, I was just about to tell you, well, the, the small and medium enterprises or the yes. sectors that you represent, Yes. Um, it, it sounds to me, when you talk about those reforms, ETC, that are coming back in the room, it sounds to me like th there is there's something, there's, there's your art, there's, there's something that you added. Were you contacted? Did you give consultancy to the government uh, no, for, we, we for, for, for things that should be included in this law that benef well, will benefit local companies? Definitely we were involved in the mm. formulation of this law and that's why we are confident that the law is good as okay. this. There are some things that ought to be changed and we agree with the president. How do we align it with the ESC mm. uh, common market protocol? How do we ensure that it does not conflict with the requirements of donors or lenders or whatever? Okay. But ultimately the law, I think in its present shape, should be passed with, a, with, a, with minor changes. And we ask the new parliament mm -hmm. to look at this law uh, with speed as soon as they are sworn in. Thank you very much, John. Uh, John Walugembe is the F Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises Executive Director uh, that uh, takes care of those businesses and makes sure that you get a fair share of the national cake in regards to the national local content law. And that's uh, the link.